Welcome to room six. Today I'm going to be reviewing some whiskeys. Yes, I know it's not Easter anymore, but this is what the Easter Bunny brought me. Apparently the Easter Bunny wants me to be drunk. Hey guys. I know it's been a bit since I did any sort of whiskey review. Usually you see me with Sean Flume. To the whiskey tribe, hello you magnificent bastards. To the internet, hi. Welcome back. Uh, basically, I got a bunch of uh, booze in my Easter basket. The Easter Bunny was very nice to me. And uh, I posted the, uh, the picture of it to the whiskey tribe. And I realized I never did a tasting of it. And what better thing to go with whiskey than chocolate. Now I have an 11 year old daughter and any parent of a tween knows that uh, busting up their prized Easter Bunny before they get a chance to rip the ears off the little bugger will result in tears. So here's one I prepared earlier. Daddy got a gigantic bunny which is actually um, <laughs> actually broken into by me and a great band called The Social Set, which I interviewed and did a review of one of their CDs uh, on this channel, on Room 6. Um, if you're interested, there's a link there. But let's keep this whiskey. I'll be right back. I'm just going to get a little bit of water for cleansing my palate and, you know, put this somewhere safe. Okay, down to business. First things first, I am not Daniel, I'm not even Sean Flume, who you normally see me do these reviews uh, with. Um, I am doing my best, okay? I've been at this for a couple months now, just trying to glean some facts and pick up some little tips. And, and uh, I know that Daniel and Rex put out a great video just recently about basically how to identify the notes. And, and other things that you're looking for when you're trying to um, compare whiskeys. I am really not doing much of that in this video. Okay, if you're looking for a technical breakdown, this is not the place. This is mostly my first reaction to these. One thing they all have in common is I've never had any of them. Okay, I've got everything from Indiana to Texas represented here. Got a lovely Old Camp Peach Pecan Whiskey. I've got Old Smoky Moonshine, okay. Tennessee Moonshine, that is. And then I've got Old Winchester Straight Bourbon Whiskey, okay. They all look good, all different colors. This is my Lucky Llama. And I think it's time to do this thing. Move this over here. So, <clears throat> unlike Sean Flume, I will be not giving myself a generous pour this evening. <laughs> but uh, I think we're going to start smallest quantity and move on up. I'm not, I'm not looking to empty any of these. This is the Old Winchester of Straight Bourbon Whiskey from, memory serves, yes, North Charleston, South Carolina, which is kind of funny. Um, this has been aged a minimum of two years in New Oak. So it'll be interesting, to say the least. In the words of many people, Pitter patter. Okay. Now, I know this is not a live stream, but if you have any comments for me, any concerns or questions about how I'm doing this, please feel free to put them in the comments so we all can learn. Hmm. Right off the bat, it's not hitting my nose super hard. Like it, it doesn't smell like it's going to be a big burn. 
Let's see. Put that right there. I know it says it's uh, aged two years in new oak, but I'm almost getting a sherry finish on this. Hmm. Some of the usual kind of a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of caramel, caramel. And it's definitely opening up and developing more than my first initial uh, nosing. And I would definitely love to hear in the comments if any of you have actually tried any of these uh, and, and what your particular experiences were. Mm. Also, you may notice I'm not in room six and I'm not in the tasting room of Sean Flume. I'm in the, my kitchen, which is downstairs from room six, because I learned the lesson the hard way about drinking over carpeting. So, here you go. Mmm. Wow. So, I was wrong about <clears throat> not much burn up front. <clears throat> there you go. Woo. But it's really, it's, it's nice and comforting though. Very smooth. Hmm. Very, uh, I, I, I apologize that I don't have the whole glossary of terms yet locked in there. But there's definitely something almost fruity about it. I'm trying to identify whether it's orange or... Yeah, I think it's orange peel. Definitely Yeah, definitely some caramel and some vanilla in there. I take back what I said about the sherry oak or sherry cask finish on the nose. Um I'm tasting the oak, you know, like they said on the bottle, a you know, minimum of two years uh, uh, in new oak. It, it definitely tastes like new oak. It doesn't taste like it's soaked up a whole bunch of flavors from the uh, barrels. Now, haven't tried this yet. We're going to see what a little bit of milk chocolate does to this. Some of you out there may be yelling, sacrilege! Hmm. <laughs> Mm, that's interesting. So the chocolate takes off some of the hard edge, as you would expect, you know, from the sweetness. But it's actually developing the. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb and say it's definitely orange peel. It's, it's developing that flavor a little bit more. Uh, it's obviously not high grade chocolate. You know, I mean, the bunny was this tall, and it was left in the uh, garage by mistake, not given to me. At, uh, on Easter, so it got a little bit uh, melted. <laughs> <coughs> if you do happen to click on that video with the social set, you'll see it's it's nightmare fuel when an Easter bunny melts in on itself. Um, okay. Boy, I really am gonna have to work on my uh, my smells, my definitions. Okay, it's not it. To my nose, it's not opening up and developing any new flavors so far. It's been open for a little bit here. Okay, a little bit astringent. I took a bigger gulp. And on on the end, on the finish. 
Yeah, a little bit more oak on the finish there. So, all in all, though, I'd drink it again. Not too bad, especially with a little bit more chocolate. Mm. Now, I did not do any sort of research on any of these bottles except what's on the label. Okay, I want to put that out there. I'm trying to go for just first blush, honest reaction, not trying to prejudice my, my thoughts or my, my feelings or, or my experience at all. Hmm. So the manufacturer is calling this a premium bourbon whiskey. Traditionally distilled, barrel aged, and uniquely ultrasonic filtered. Okay, so marketing talk since 1866. Uh, I'm guessing that they mean possibly the company's been distilling since 1866. Hmm. Now that it's had a little bit more time, warm up in my hand and, and develop, the vanilla is getting stronger. Hmm. Hmm. Almost forgot. There you go. Nice legs. I'm getting definitely getting some spices in there. Um, not cinnamon, clove maybe a little bit of clove, possibly some cardamom. So I may be talking out my ass here. Mm. Okay. This would go really well with comfort food, like some mashed potatoes with uh, butter and like a shepherd's pot pie or, or something like that. Even though I know it's not scotch, it's not Irish whiskey, I could see eating it, or I could see drinking it while eating that type of food. Of course, chocolate always works too. Mm. <coughs> I apologize, allergy season's in full swing. I've got that, that annoying dry cough. Mm. Okay, so that, in a nutshell, is my interpretation of Whis Winchester Street Bourbon Whiskey from North Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, and we'll put that right there okay last swig let's see what we get on the on the uh, the final end here Yep, nothing new, and um, definitely nice. I prefer something like that on, you know, a couple rocks maybe. Just a little bit of ice, just to take away some of the, the, the harshness and the, the highs and lows. Um, yeah, it's more of a, I just want some, some bourbon. I'm not, you know, celebrating a triumph in my life necessarily. It's just, I want some bourbon. Okay, next we've got Old Smoky Tennessee Moonshine and uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It's got a nice kind of honey color to it. And uh, oh, just, it's apple pie moonshine. Ooh, so it'll taste a little bit like dessert. It's uh, still from corn, so. Yay. I haven't had corn moonshine in years. Shake well. Oh, huh. that's new. Haven't seen that on a bottle of uh, 
bourbon or whiskey. I don't know, actually. I, I didn't realize that this was apple pie moonshine. I don't know if this qualifies as whiskey. I apologize. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is change up the order because this definitely is whiskey. It says it on the bottle. I'll save this for dessert or desert. This is peach pecan or pecan whiskey. Old Camp. And you have to read like the little label here to figure out where it's from. Lawrenceburg, Indiana. I'm not sure what Indiana knows about whiskey, but we're going to find out. And bottle's got some, looks like pine trees with a wolf silhouette, howling, old camp. It's a great size. Definitely like a little pocket flask pull out around the campfire. <coughs> so we'll see. I should point out, I'm not a fan, generally, of, of peach-flavored alcohol or pecan, general, just pecan pie, pecans, any of them. So, uh, I don't know why the Easter Bunny decided to give me this, but there you go. Pick a powder. Okay. That. All pretty. Oh, wow. You definitely get the peach. It's the close. Usually, when you see something is peach, smells like peach, you know, it's supposed to taste like peach. It doesn't smell like a peach, like a real, honest to gosh, peach that you get, you know, and it's when it's warm in the summer. This smells like a peach. Almost like a peach, um, peach cobbler or something. The peach part of it. If you didn't tell me it was pecan, uh, peach pecan whiskey, I wouldn't be able to identify the pecan part. But I definitely now that you know my mind is, is thinking about it. That's what it. That's what it is. There's that undefinable. What is that? It's not. It's some sort of nut. It's some sort of thing. Well. Turns out it's pecan. They didn't candy the pecans. They may have smoked them. <clears throat> Doesn't smell like whiskey really at all. It just smells like dessert. It, it just smells like, um, like when you, you go to the grocery store and you get the bottle of fruit nectar, you know, that's what it smells like to me. It smells like I'm gonna drink peach juice with uh, some pecan flavoring mixed in. So we'll find out. Wow. Maybe I should have saved this for dessert. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. There's not a lot about this in terms of layers or, or notes. This is just sweet in a good way, not cloyingly sweet, not sweet, like I need some water to cut this, or, or you know, this is tastes like dessert, you know, in a glass. It's just a really, it almost tastes like a cordial, like a really mild cordial. Okay, definitely getting some spices now. Um, cinnamon, which you would expect. Uh, nutmeg. The pecan is starting to come through a little bit now that you're, my mind, my, my tongue is used to the, the peach part of things. It's kind of pushing it to the side and saying, what else is there? Mm. Mm. And for the record, you should be very glad that that little bastard has dead batteries because it's creepy. It's creepy when it uh, when it turns on and starts jumping around and singing. Here comes Peter Cottontail. Nightmare fuel, I'm telling you. Hmm. 
Mm. Once again, I'm sorry this is not a live stream on Facebook. Uh, I wanted to try for a little bit more um, production value, I guess, if you will. And also, I make mistakes when I record. <laughs> mm. Mm. Mm hmm. Wow. So when you add some chocolate into it, it becomes somehow more complex. It's picking up the flavors from the chocolate and um, all of a sudden the peach takes a back seat and the pecan and the spices are, are, you know, right there up front, making it really good for pairing with bread pudding, with things you wouldn't normally associate with, like normally, I don't want to mix sweet with sweet. Something like the Winchester, I would say, yeah, let's have some savory dish with it. But I could also see it with bread pudding or, or something like that. This is just subtle enough that it's an accent. It's not a overwhelming competition. But this is dangerous. I mean, this is stuff like, oh, I don't like whiskey. Oh, here, try this. Wow, that's really good. Let me have the bottle. And next thing you know, they're on the floor. That's that's what this is. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There are times where I just want to get a little bit tipsy and enjoy the ride, as opposed to uh, I want to force myself to finish this glass because I paid for this bottle. Mm. Okay. Now that it's opened up a little bit, and I took a bigger swig, getting some more notes on the back end, uh, which I, is great. I mean, you know, when you when you buy something or when some the Easter Bunny drops off something for you, you do want more than just that first initial response. Um, yeah. In fact, uh, when Sean Flume and I were uh, doing the last t tasting we did at uh, his place. <clears throat> we, among other things, tested uh, Grainstone bourbon cask finish and Grainstone rum cask finish. And both of them, regardless of which one, after the first, like, five minutes, it all just kind of went, meh, went away, and it was just, Grange, it was just a, a decent bourbon. Um, you can check that out here, by the way. Um, this is actually developing more, I think. This is kind of the opposite. Yeah. Mm hmm It's not orange peel, or it's not orange. There's some some fruit in there, besides peach, obviously. But it's, it's like when you get apple juice or, or, you know, one of those juices where you read the ingredients and there's a few other fruits they threw in there to balance it out. Somehow, those other fruits made it taste more like the, the, the flavor that they were going for. I could definitely see getting really schnockered on this. So, good job, Easter Bunny. Um, mm. Sean, if you're watching this, I'll save some for you for dessert. I know how much you like dessert after drinking. Mmm. Wow. Well, that's a big gulp. Obviously, a little bit of a burn to remind you, yeah, I'm whiskey. It's there. Just a little bit. But I actually almost feel guilty for gulping like that. Mm. Yeah, that was about as much as I could handle of that in one sitting. Um, I wouldn't want <coughs> I wouldn't want to you know fill this halfway or even this halfway with it. Um, because 
like all things sweet, eventually you just get kind of tired of it, you know, and, and it overwhelms your senses. So, really, really good in moderation. This is a, something you sip on for a while. You know, throw that on some rocks or something. And this is the unknown quantity. Okay. Last but not least, I appreciate you hanging in there with me. Remember, if you uh, have any comments, concerns, whatever, please be nice. But uh, throw them in the comments, and I definitely will be reading them all. Because I want to learn just like the rest of us. It's the nice thing about the Whiskey Tribe. We're all here to learn and, and enjoy. Um, and, you, you know, rule number one. All right. Tennessee, let's see what you got. Oh, that's right. It's supposed to shake well. Apparently the apple pie is on the bottom. Ready? Oh yeah. There's definitely particulate in here now. That's my uh, college word for the day. Ooh. Oh boy. I was trying to trying to twist it off so it would stop pouring, and I ended up pouring more in. Awesome. All right, ladies and germs, <clears throat> old smoky, hopefully not too smoky. Hmm. Yes, even though it's moonshine, I'm hoping it still uh, qualifies and you're not going to throw me out of the tribe. Whoa, okay, right off the bat, I, I get tart apple, and I, I get pie crust. Like, if I didn't know better, I'd swear they ground up some pie crust and threw it in there. Mm-hmm, yep. Um, you get the usual apple pie spices, you know, cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, maybe a little cardamom. But I also get... What is that? I, I don't have a name for what I'm smelling. I apologize. I, I, that's just lack of experience, really. But let's see if tasting changes things. Okay. Okay. All right. Where this was sweet, but in an innocent way, like, oh, don't worry, there's nothing to worry about. Have some more. And and the peach was right there, but up front, but it wasn't uh, smacking upside the face. This tastes so much like apple pie filling. And I'm talking the stuff from the can. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this. I'm hoping it develops more, uh, more notes and flavors because the nose when you when you buy medicine and it's supposed to be uh, strawberry flavored and you you open the bottle you're like that's not what a strawberry smells like this is not what apple pie should smell like this is when apple pie has gone off it's been sitting around too long but the taste And it's because, again, this is moonshine, or it's it's being marketed as moonshine. 
uh, it's like somebody poured alcohol in an apple pie and then said, here, have a bite. Again, it's, if I hadn't had this before that, I'm glad I did it in this order because I'm, I don't know how that would have affected things, but if I hadn't had the uh, old camp first, it, I wouldn't know what a good, sweet whiskey was supposed to taste like. Granted, again, it's moonshine. I'm sorry I didn't pay more attention. I brought this to the wrong fight, but... Uh, mm. This episode is about what the Easter Bunny brought me, not what, you know, not, not just whiskey. Now let's see what chocolate does to this. <clears throat> and for the record, those of you that uh, grew up with a slice of American cheese on your apple pie, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop it. Let the hate flow in the com comments. Okay. Interesting. Whereas chocolate with the Winchester took some of the edge off, and with the old camp kind of deepened the flavor, the chocolate with the um, old smoky is taking the sweetness out, but leaving the savory. Uh, apple pie with all the the spices flavor very strange but still not in a bad way interesting now that it's opened up a little bit more warmed up Maybe because of the chocolate. It tastes less like dessert now and more like um, just apple whiskey. Or apple moonshine, sorry. I'm not mad at it. But of the three here, if I had to have another drink of something. At this point, having had all three and really gone off the sweet end, I would go back to the Winchester, a couple of rocks, and just sip it and let it, you know, dilute and mellow out and, and just enjoy that without any more Easter chocolate. Mm. Yeah, there's definitely more than just apple in there when it comes to the fruit. Um, same thing with this. They they added other flavors. Um, I'm getting a little orange. <clears throat> I'm not sure what kind of orange, but actually, tangerine is popping to mind for some reason. And I may be wrong. Let me know in the comments. Okay, well. Yep, that's that's about all I can handle of the sweet. I'm done. We'll put this there. Llama has decided that Llama's done too. I want to thank you for watching. And uh, thank you for coming by room six. Please like, share, and subscribe. Drink responsibly. Remember rule one. And uh, I have not memorized the toast yet, so I will go with one of my own. Here's to you, and here's to me, and if ever we should disagree, then to hell with you, and here's to me. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time in Room 6.